small islands developing states are amongst the most vulnerable climate countries. At the same time, they have consistently led by example on ambitious climate action. I now invite Her Excellency Mia Motley, Prime Minister of Barbados, His Excellency Tommy Isang Romengasau, Jr., President of Palau, His Excellency Alan Chasnet, Prime Minister of St. Lucia, His Excellency Ibrahim Mohamed Saleh, President of the Maldives, there are no countries, as we all know, more vulnerable to the impacts of climate change than the low-lying atoll nations. President Sali, what can the Maldives and others do to ensure a safe and prosperous future? Yes. Uh, Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we come to these forums and reiterate the same points. The climate change is the defining issue of the 21st century. That a failure to address it, it will endanger the planet's health and the lives of every generation that follows us. That the science is irrefutable. We hope that the moral force of our argument is strong enough to finally compel the global community to take effective action because we cannot compromise on our survival. Ladies and gentlemen, I am certain that other small island states present here today seek realistic solutions just like us. This is precisely why the Maldives has formulated a holistic plan encompassing achievable targets for small islands to address the ravages of climate change. Our plan was further bolstered by the support we received from fellow members of the OSIS and SEEDS and other key development agencies to whom we remain grateful. Our Climate Smart Resilient Islands Plan comprises deliverable targets around 11 key areas, including designation of environmentally protected areas, installation of new technology, establishing inter-island connectivity, safeguarding food and water security, promoting green tourism, ensuring climate-resilient infrastructure, transitioning to renewable energy, and sustainable waste management, among others. This plan outlined my vision for the Maldivian people. The pledges are realistic and achievable, and prioritize building a sustainable society in harmony with our fragile ecosystem. We intend to conserve eco-rich areas phase out single-use plastic, rapidly transit to renewable energy in the transportation and tourism sectors. We have committed ourselves to a timeline with each target, and we fully intend to implement these while according full consideration to intergenerational partnerships, gender equality, and the role of youth. I call upon other SIPs to replicate our model to achieve a post-carbon economy and climate-smart development pathway that will, in turn, safeguard our people from climate-associated risks in the future. However, to realize this initiative and for this to grow, finance need to be made available. In 2010, a goal was set to make $100 billion of financing available for developing countries by 2020. We are in September 2019, and 2020 is just a few months away. It is with great regret I note that the realization of finance for that target is very below expectation. Among the available finance, the share is for less for a vulnerable community like the SIDS. Access to finance needs to change for the better. You have heard our concerns. We have told you about the measures that we intend to take. We are now asking you to do your due diligence. We are asking you to do better, to do more. Thank you. Your Excellency, thank you so much.